Today I'd like to talk a little bit about 3M Center, located in Maplewood, Minnesota. This is a mid-century modern corporate campus located in the suburbs of St. Paul, and this presentation will discuss the developmental history of the campus and provide some strategies for consideration of historical significance as both a locus of innovation and a visual symbol of the power of ideas for the company. When most people think of 3M, they probably think of a handful of the most common products, scotch tape, scotch bright sponges, or the ever-present post-it note. But for people living in the Twin Cities of Minnesota, 3M's headquarters itself is a visual landmark. Although the company first began on the north shore of Lake Superior in 1902 and spent its early years as a struggling sandpaper manufacturer, for more than 100 years, 3M has called the St. Paul vicinity home. Today, its national headquarters is located in the suburb of Maplewood, just east of St. Paul, where the massive administration building towers over anyone driving on Interstate 94. From the 1910s through World War II, 3M's headquarters was located on St. Paul's east side, a sprawling jumble of industrial buildings located between a major railroad corridor and a residential neighborhood, as you can see in this image here. 3M's vast manufacturing complex eventually occupied more than 100 acres, with administrative and laboratory buildings side by side with enormous tape and sandpaper factories. In most respects, this was not remotely unusual. In many parts of Minneapolis and St. Paul, manufacturing facilities lined the railroad corridors in and out of the cities, wedged in among the residential neighborhoods where much of the workforce resided. These patterns of development, begun in the late 19th century, carried right through into the 1950s when they were disrupted by the wave of suburbanization that swept through metropolitan areas across the nation in the wake of World War II. In the post-war period, 3M did what many large corporations in the Twin Cities and nationwide did, and relocated their urban headquarters to a nearby suburban location, taking advantage of favorable tax rates and larger tracts of available land that enabled the development of sprawling campuses. For 3M, the new facility offered an opportunity to reinvent the company's visual brand by creating a headquarters fit for the atomic age. After considering a number of sites on the outskirts of the city, in December of 1952, the company purchased a 125-acre tract just east of the city limits, located along the main east-west highway to the Twin Cities, and announced plans for new construction early in 1953. One of the factors that made the new development unusual is that for the first time in the company's history, the planned complex did not include manufacturing at all, with the exception of the pilot plants for experimental production and research purposes. In fact, the new campus was originally planned solely as a research facility where 3M scientists and technicians could continue to experiment with new materials and their applications in new commercial products. Early in its history, the company had recognized that an investment in research and innovation yielded untold returns in new product development and market expansion. Many of the company's most famous products, including the post-it note, were developed by employees who were given free reign to experiment with the wide range of chemical compounds and other products that the company made. In the first half of the 20th century, 3M had made its name through product lines that included wet or dry sandpaper, adhesive tape, and reflective sheeting, and introduced new products including magnetic audio tape and the first thermofax copier. In the process, the company developed a wealth of knowledge that served as a platform for many future advances in adhesives, plastic film, and non-woven fibers. Innovations in these fields continued in the post-war period, and the impetus provided by the Cold War and the space program led to a proliferation of new products and technologies as the company expanded its research into new fields. In order to foster this type of collaboration, 3M executives initially conceived of the new suburban complex as a modern research facility that would serve as a growth engine, what one newspaper article described as an idea factory. Previously, 3M's research staff were scattered at several buildings in St. Paul in cramped, inadequate laboratory facilities, but in addition to the purely practical need to house researchers, the new research center served as a very public commitment to the company's policy of encouraging innovation and its desire to be known as a leader in the field. Promotional statements that accompanied the opening of the mid-century modern Central Research Building resoundingly reflect this corporate ethos and policy, 
echoing the conviction that research and product development created new products, which in turn created thousands of jobs. In the new building's dedication program, Central Research Director Carl Barnes put it rather succinctly, our new Central Research Building is in itself an expression of management's faith in research. And well, this faith continued to be expressed as 3M went on to construct over one half million square feet of space at the research center between 1954 and 1959. At the time 3M began construction of the Maplewood complex, it had already grown into an international operation. Post-war growth included the additions of new manufacturing facilities across the country, and by the mid-1950s, 3M had expanded its manufacturing and distribution into the UK, Australia, France, Germany, Canada, and Brazil. As the 1950s drew to a close, 3M had long since outgrown its administrative spaces in St. Paul and began to look to 3M Center as the site for future growth. The company purchased additional land east of the existing campus, doubling its size to a total of 265 acres. With more than a thousand office staff already housed in temporary space at the Maplewood Research Center, in 1959, the company announced plans for an unprecedented expansion that was planned to accommodate all research and administrative needs through the early 1970s. The first phase of this expansion, representing the largest single construction project undertaken in the company's history, included a 14-story administration building, known as Building 220, designed by Ellerby and Company, and it was at the time the largest single occupant building in the Twin Cities. Adjacent to the administration building, the company constructed a two-story cafeteria and an underground parking ramp with a plaza above. Upon its completion, the new Building 220 replaced the 3M administration building in St. Paul, both physically and symbolically, as the corporate headquarters. This image from the 3M collection in the Minnesota Historical Society's archives shows the building under construction. You can see the steel and concrete skeleton of the structure, along with the partial installation of the pleated curtain wall. The curtain wall itself required two acres of glass and an acre and a half of Carthage marble, forming the horizontal bands you can see here. The interior lobby showcased a luxurious mid-century modern sensibility with its freestanding spiral staircase, terrazzo and travertine flooring, and massive columns faced in Italian marble. Promotional literature devoted even more space to the infrastructure within, offering statistics touting the electrical consumption and vast quantities of artificial light. This new phase of development at 3M Center, combining the research and administrative facilities away from manufacturing, represented a departure from company tradition. The former administration building in St. Paul, a modern design by Toltz King and Day in association with noted Detroit firm Albert Kahn Incorporated, was an impressive piece of architecture in its own right. The remainder of the St. Paul complex has since been demolished, but the admin building was historically surrounded by a sprawl of industrial buildings and, by default or design, reflected close ties to the company's manufacturing roots. The new administrative portion of 3M Center, in contrast, reflected a deliberate attempt to project a corporate identity that placed research and innovation at the forefront. 3M Center remained the site of all the company's research activities into the 1970s, with the exception of one photo research lab in Harlow, England, which opened in 1963. Despite national and global expansion, by the close of the 1960s, nearly 20% of 3M's 38,000 U.S.-based workers were still located at 3M Center, a population equivalent to that of some of Minnesota's smaller cities. Throughout the decade, 3M continued to develop the campus to provide additional research and administrative space, adding new laboratories, offices, and support buildings. In 1967, the company broke ground for another six-story office building adjacent to Building 220. Like its neighbor, the new building was larger than any other single occupant building in the Twin Cities at that time, and additional construction gradually created an administrative quadrangle at the rear of the main administration building. As it was constructed in several phases, the 3M Center complex as a whole does not conform to a single fixed plan for a corporate campus or a state. Rather, it demonstrates the company's vision for a flexible space with room to grow. The collection of buildings displays this organic growth, demonstrating a degree of architectural cohesion and continuity 
as features from the earliest mid-century modern labs carried over into subsequent buildings. Later buildings continue to reference architectural elements, such as contrasting stone veneer panels and concrete window hoods, and buff brick provides additional visual continuity among laboratory and support buildings. Offices arranged around the central quadrangle create a visual emphasis on the flagship headquarters, and today the plaza they enclose is actually used to showcase various flooring materials produced by 3M arranged in decorative black and white patterns. In the abstract sense, the complex in Maplewood anchors the company's heart, the administration building, in the center of a research facility, inextricably linking the concepts of innovation and success. The use of eye-catching modern architecture also positions the building solidly in the future, a glittering tower rising above the terrain. With its location along one of the busiest stretches of highway in the East Metro area, the complex pledged its allegiance to the car culture of the post-war era, telegraphing the connection between the building and the new built environment of freeway and suburb, different and separate from the earlier urban setting, and positioning the company, which was still a major manufacturer, as a white-collar entity in a bucolic landscape rather than a cluster of factories in a turn-of-the-century industrial environment. In the process, 3M had in fact helped to shape this suburban landscape east of St. Paul. Prior to World War II, the land just east of the city limits was largely agricultural, with several small crossroads communities. By the early 1950s, suburban residential development was just beginning in the easternmost part of St. Paul, but within a few years had progressed to the point where the remaining portions of the adjacent rural townships began to incorporate as villages to avoid being annexed by the city itself, and that is exactly what happened with Maplewood. Ironically, the new suburban campus became the 20th century equivalent of the old St. Paul site. Instead of factories arranged along a rail corridor and surrounded by residential neighborhoods of late 19th and early 20th century homes, here, office buildings were oriented to the new dominant transit corridor, the interstate, and are surrounded by post-war tract homes. This 1960s image shows the site in relation to downtown St. Paul, shown in the distance, with the interstate to the left and a sea of post-war houses in between. This second image, from roughly the same time, shows the view in the other direction. All the residential developments in the foreground and the background were farmland when 3M broke ground for the central research building in the early 1950s. Additionally, the buildings themselves, particularly the administration building, acted as a literal billboard in the suburban landscape of the 1960s. Within this setting, the 3M administration building is a prominent visible landmark, rising 200 feet above anything nearby. And from the first year of its occupancy, the company began using its acres of glass and thousands of fluorescent lights as an illuminated message board to the metro community. Every winter since 1962, the company has transformed the building into a pixelated Christmas tree at night. Other messages have urged passers-by to vote in elections, and in one case, in 1965, urged the Minnesota Twins to win the World Series against the Dodgers, to no avail. I first approached the history of 3M Center as part of an evaluation to determine whether the complex was eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. A key element in the evaluation process lay in distinguishing the Maplewood campus from earlier properties associated with 3M a difficulty not uncommon when dealing with the post-war suburban headquarters of older corporations once based in an urban core. In the case of 3M, both the original building on the North Shore and the 1940 administration building in St. Paul were already listed for their association with the company, but represent totally different phases in 3M's history and demonstrate completely different spatial relationships to their surroundings, characteristic of their own time and place. In contrast, the Maplewood headquarters represents 3M's commitment to innovation in a uniquely mid-century way, as a company developing products for the atomic age and space age in a suburban landscape. When Neil Armstrong took his first steps on the moon in 1969, the soles of his boots were coated in a 3M product, one that was developed in a suburban location that faced a brand new interstate highway overseen from a great glass tower. Thanks for listening.